Siri, let's get the legal mumbo jumbo out of the way. This video is merely for demonstration and education purposes. If you choose to open your iPhone, you take full liability for the consequences that may follow. Snazzy Labs LLC is not to be held liable for any possible damage that may occur from this self-installation process. You are preforming this repair at your own risk. Lucky for you, there's very few tools you actually need to disassemble the entire iPhone 4S. The first would be a Penelope screwdriver, and this is going to run you a couple dollars on Amazon, but I beg of you, get this tool. You can't do it with any others, and if you try, you'll strip your screws. The rest of the phone is going to be disassembled by the Phillips double zero screwdriver. These can be found just about anywhere. We're also going to need a standard screwdriver, which is necessary to remove a couple finicky screws, a plastic spudger, which can be found online for 99 cents, and a paper clip to remove the SIM tray. First, you need to power off your device. By doing this, we will ensure that no data is lost when we pull the battery cord in just a minute. Additionally, you're going to need that paper clip we talked about to remove the SIM tray. Simply stick it in the hole on the side of the device and pop it out. Yes, you do need to do this even if you don't have a SIM card in there because the tray locks into the motherboard and without it, it will be impossible to disassemble the phone. Now take your fancy new Pentalobe screwdriver. Please ensure that it's a Pentalobe screwdriver or else you will strip the screws down here on the bottom. Now, as you notice, they're not very tight even when Apple puts them on. So take note to that when you're putting them back on. The threading is very, very thin, and so they're very easy to strip. Take your time and make sure that they go in and out nice without overstress. Once you've done that, take both thumbs and turn the device around and slide up with the panel. You'll hear a little bit of a click and you can pull off the panel completely. There are two screws securing the battery connector to the logic board, and all you have to do to remove those is use your Phillips double zero screwdriver to get rid of both of those screws. Once you've taken those off and placed them aside in order so you don't lose them, take your little plastic spudger and pull upwards on the left side of the connector, which will allow you to disconnect the battery from the motherboard. Now, as you can see, there's this little tab here, but it's very easy to bend and crinkle. And if Apple checks that out, they're gonna know you got in the phone. So I use this plastic spudger to simply pry the battery up as it is adhesed, making it easier to remove it and ensuring that it doesn't look like you've been toying around inside your phone. There's an insider tip. Place the battery aside. Right. Now it comes time to remove that little black metal piece and place that aside with your screws. And now we need to remove the antenna diode and cable which is sitting right there. Take your little plastic spudger and simply disconnect the diode from the cable. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a hook. Simply undo the cable and make sure it's out of the way. Okay, see this metal plate? Groovy, me too. There's two screws that you need to remove. They are different sizes, so be sure to keep track of them. The larger one, contrary to what you might think, is on the left side of the device or the outside of the device. Place those two screws aside once you've removed them. Once you remove those two screws, the plate is ready to come out. It might be ever so slightly adhesed, but don't be worried to give it a little bit of a tug. It's easier than your virgin 40-year-old gym teacher. For camera angle's sake, I'm gonna turn the device around so you can see me yank this little cable up. Grab your plastic spudger, and it is a connector that you can remove very easily. Now, the cable is actually adhesed to the logic board, so you will have to give it a little bit of some force and pressure, but be very careful with it as it's very prone to tearing. Boom, we're on the bottom of the device. As you can see, there's one and two screws underneath that cable we just pulled up that need to be removed. They come out pretty easily. Take your time, no rush. Now, underneath the screw that's underneath the cable, you're going to find a little steel 30-60-90 triangle piece. I call it the black pizza piece. Don't worry, it's supposed to come out. Just place it aside. We'll put it back in later. Now that we've removed the two screws holding the bottom in, all we have to do is pull it out and place it aside. There are some copper conductors on the bottom. Beware of those because they do break easily. Now we get to our buddy, the EMI shield. Now this thing's a little bit of a bugger to pull out, so be sure to remove these four screws in the right order because they are different sizes and will need to be put back exactly as they were pulled out. So keep track of them. 
this is the last area we need to address before we can get to the EMI shield and get to some fun where we can pop out a bunch of different connectors. Now there is this Phillips screw right here that does need to be removed because we're gonna be working in this area a little bit longer. Now that screw was holding this little plate in place and it's actually a conductor that goes pretty well deep into the phone. So take your little plastic spludger and just kind of pull it up at a 45 degree angle so you can grab it with your fingers and grab the little brass connectors out from underneath the display. Hey! We're so close to the magic behind the EMI shield and there's only one connector standing in the way. That's this little guy right here which is actually another antenna diode which needs to be removed with your plastic spudger. Yay, now it's time to remove the EMI shield, but don't get too excited because it's the hardest thing to take out. See that? That is a very, very thin ribbon cable, and that right there is a hook. Now, you do have to pull the EMI shield towards you in order to get that released, but that cable is there and is very prone to tearing, so be very careful when you remove the EMI shield. April Fools, we're not quite ready. You do need to take your standard flathead screwdriver to remove this little screw, which is actually a screw that allows you to plug a screw into it. Screwception. No homo. So once you've removed this, and please do so very carefully because it's near some very sensitive components that can't be scratched or abrased, you can see what a weird little screw it is and get ready to unplugging the fun stuff. Ta 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 time for the fun stuff. Okay, so this is the first cable that needs to be removed. Please ensure that it is removed first. The order after this first one doesn't really matter, but this one does need to come up first. Don't ask why, it just needs to be done. No, actually I'll tell you, it's because this cable right here, the second one, is beneath the first one. So you need to remove the first one to remove the second one. Novel, eh? Okay, now the third cable actually is the whole camera assembly. So if your camera comes out or flies out of your device, don't worry, just place the camera assembly aside. That's supposed to happen. Cable number four is a little guy and should come out with ease. Which gives us cable number five to be left with. Now this is a long one, but wait, I said six cables. Yes, it's because underneath cable number five, is a very tiny cable number six. Make sure you pull this out. If you don't, it will make for a very unpleasant time when pulling out the logic port. Okay, we're up near the camera, and as you can see, there's this little black piece of adhesive, it looks like. I would assume this is to indicate whether or not the device has been tampered with, therefore determining your warranty, so make sure you really want to proceed after this step. But there is a screw beneath it that does need to be removed. This little piece of plastic can be re-adhesed and put back on like it was never taken off, so do take good care of it because we can fix it later on. Once you've placed the black adhesive aside, you have this singular screw that you have to deal with. It's easy. Get her done. Say it ain't so, we got another one of those weird little screws that we have to use our standard flathead screwdriver for. Again, it's by some pretty sensitive areas, so take your time, be careful. There's nothing to rush about. Now there are two more screws that need to be removed. There are standard Phillips screws, so you can get your Phillips double zero screwdriver back. There's one right here by the A5 chip. And there's one right here hiding in the depths of the iPhone. Huzzah, we've removed the three screws, so all we have to do now is make sure the cables are out of the way and pull out the logic board. Now, it came out for me with ease. If you're having a lot of trouble, make sure that you took the SIM tray out because if you didn't take the SIM tray out, it's attached to the logic board. So when you pull this out, obviously it's not going to come out of the frame if the SIM card slot is in. So make sure you're aware of that. 
Oh, vibrating motor, how we despise you. Unlike everything else, which is very nicely screwed, the vibrating motor is adhesed, and boy, does it take a lot of prying to get it out. Now, check that out. See that? That's folded over adhesive. Make sure yours is not like that. It's going to make it a lot harder to put back on during reassembly. Merry Christmas. This is the most time-consuming part. You have 10 screws that need to be removed, three on each side, and four in the corner. A lot of them are very, very tight, so be careful and don't strip them because that will make for a lot harder removal. Wouldn't it be nice if these were easy screws? Yeah, well, tough crap because they come out easily, but they also have a washer, which makes them incredibly sucky when you reassemble. But you do need them and you have to keep track of them. Tough beans. No, hey, it's good to see you. We're up by the camera. See that screw right there? No, it's actually for the sleep wake switch, so don't remove that. Apple's back in full force with that mysterious black tape. So you do need to remove the black tape so you can remove the last of the four corner screws. And we're already assuming that you removed the six other screws. So remove those, there's a Phillips beneath, and we're good to go. All right, we're ready to remove the digitizer from the iPhone 4's steel frame. What you have to do is take your little plastic spudger and insert it in between the plastic here and the actual band. Now, if you're struggling, I'd use a heat gun for no more than five seconds total on each corner so that you can kind of loosen things up. When you throw the new display in, please make sure that these two cables are at the fullest length. If you crimp either of these two cables, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to not only reassemble your device, but furthermore, you might damage the brand new screen. If you're not particularly snazzy at performing tasks backwards, we don't blame you. And because of this, we've provided a reassembly video for your advantage. Click the on-screen annotation to begin. That being said, we do recommend that once your iPhone is back in one piece that you test all of its functions before putting your tools away. Make sure the home button, the proximity sensor, the ambient light sensor, the touchscreen, etc., etc. are performing as they should. If they do, congratulations, you've completed this task successfully. If you have any questions or concerns about installation, please leave them in the comments below so that I can try and assist you. If this video was helpful to you, I would appreciate it if you liked this video and considered subscribing to my channel. Additionally, purchasing your iPhone 4S parts through my Amazon referral link can not only ensure you the best price, but also save you money on tax. Additionally, I get a small commission slice, which motivates me to continue making videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay snazzy.